we can try this exercise with some real objects and just ask ourselves, what is it we would think we would see? If this is an object and, and here we are standing looking into a mirror, what is it we would think we would see looking into that mirror? Well, we would have to again think about the fact that light is diffusely reflecting in all different directions from this object. Some of it uh, is going to travel down like so and reach our eye. Some of it is going to travel like so and so on. And if we were to continue that process of just drawing uh, light rays emitted from the object and then reflect it at equal angles. The picture we would draw would look something like this. That light is coming in, reflecting at the same angle going out. Light is coming in, reflected at the same angle going out. And our eye sees a bunch of light rays emanating out from the mirror in a diverging pattern. In other words, they appear to come back from a point origin way back behind the mirror. So we would draw a point of convergence of those light rays back behind the mirror. We could do the same for the base of the flower. We could draw a bunch of light rays coming in all different directions. I've just drawn three in this picture. And we would see a bunch of light rays heading out away from the mirror. They would appear to be diverging again. Our mind doesn't realize that they reflected off the mirror and instead tries to extrapolate them back toward a common origin and they would meet right there. So in this sense, our mind reconstructs a set of points, one for the top of the flower, one for the leaf of the flower, one for the bottom of the flower, and we think that there is, in fact, a flower on the back side of this mirror, behind the mirror, even though we can't see light behind the mirror. In fact, no light actually comes from back here. All the light in this picture is staying on this side of the mirror, and it's just reflected around. It's just that in this uh, process of reconstructing an image with our minds, we believe that the light comes in a straight path, and if we see it heading toward us, because this is the light we see down here, we extrapolate it back behind the mirror. And we can play this game with a lot of different examples. You might place an object on top of a mirror, so literally set it on a mirrored floor, and what is it we would see? Well, we would see light coming off and reflecting in different directions. and our eye would then tend to extrapolate these back towards some point back here. And by the same token, light would reflect from the top of the flower off to the mirror. And what would we do? We would tend to extrapolate these light rays back, my artistry is not so good, toward a common origin, and I'll rely on a computer drawing rather than my personal drawing. But we might see something that looks like this. And if we allow our mind to do its work and just say that these are light rays diverging out toward us and extrapolate them back with our mind, we would tend to reconstruct an image point for the top of the flower that's back here behind the mirror. And the top of the flower in this case would look further into the mirror than the bottom of the flower because we, we stood, in this example, the object on top of a mirrored floor. So the things that are closer to the mirror look like they are closer to the back of you know, the mirror, and the things that are further away from the mirror look like they're further back in behind the mirror. And in fact, this is an important part of mirrors and about how our mind works when we look at Im objects inside of a mirror. We tend to perceive depth um, more or less in congruence with what's there but it's just all behind the mirror. The things that are closer to the mirror tend to look closer behind the mirror. Things that are further from the mirror tend to look uh, further back from the mirror. But always these things work because they obey the law of reflection. Here are a couple of famous paintings, uh, one by Edward Manet and one by Norman Rockwell. And both of them tried to draw an image inside of a mirror. And I can tell you that one of the artists here more or less has his optics correct and the other does not. And one of them was able to use the law of reflection just quite accurately and the other uh, didn't quite get it right. If you look at the picture from Norman Rockwell and imagine what would light do, light would come in straight toward the mirror from this girl and then head out toward you. 
And in this other picture, it looks like we're looking at a bartender in front of a bar, and behind the bartender is a mirror. And the mirror is exactly facing us. And if light from this girl, the bartender, was reflecting off in all different directions and going into that mirror behind her, then her image should appear directly behind her. And in fact, we would hardly see it because it should be back here. But it looks like the artist has drawn her image over to the side. And in fact, that's right there, a self-portrait of the artist Edward Manet. And he's drawn himself over to the side. So in fact, the picture on the right, the painting on the right, is not quite accurate. It does not use the law of reflection, because the law of reflection would put light rays coming straight back and then heading to her eye. Light rays heading off to this side over here should keep on traveling to the right, uh, and it reflects off the mirror. In fact, using the law of reflection, we can better understand why it is that some things look reversed when we look inside of a mirror. I said earlier that things that look close to us uh, inside of a mirror are really, in fact, close to the front of the mirror. And things that look further back inside of a mirror really did come from something that was further away from the mirror. The mirror, a flat mirror, always tends to preserve the orientation of things as they are in front of us. And yet, in our popular language, we tend to say that we talk about mirror reflections or things becoming inverted. Well, that's not really quite accurate, or that's not a quite accurate description of how mir flat mirrors work. Flat mirrors tend to preserve the orientation of what they see in front of them, or not they don't see, but we tend to see uh, exactly the same orientation of things um, in, in the flat mirror. So if this part of the letter A is further to our right, um, it is further to the right in that mirror reflection. And if this part of the letter A is further to our left, then it's going to be further to our left in front of the mirror reflection. And if the letter A is coming toward this camera, it will come right back toward off the camera when it reflects. And so in fact, when we say things like uh, things are flipped in a mirror, it's more accurate to say that um, our mind has not, has not flipped along with uh, the light that's coming back from the mirror. So a mirror does not really invert. In this case, the mirror preserves the same orientation of all the light that went into the mirror. And that's at least an intuitive understanding of what happens and how images are formed uh, in behind a flat mirror.